Okay, I think we will go ahead and get started. Uh, this is going to be a live broadcast. Um, I actually tried to record this yesterday. I had some technical difficulties, so I'm going to give it another shot. Uh, this recording today, we're going to be talking about the do's and don'ts to academic writing. This is specifically for those who are writing a, an academic essay. And uh, I'm thinking about the group that I'm currently teaching this semester, Communicative Abilities in English 1. And so today I want to go over your first drafts. And as we're working this next week or this current week, trying to complete our final draft, I want to give you some things to think about. In fact, I've included a list of do's and don'ts that I want to review. Uh, today I want to show you an example of a first draft, go over the first draft with you, and also touch on many of the points that I've listed here in the document. My suggestion would be to go through this list of do's and don'ts, taking a look at each of these items one by one as it relates to your own document. In addition to looking at the example document, <clears throat> the example first draft document that I want to share with you here this morning, and again, use it as a point of comparison. Some of the things we talk about here today may apply to you, some may not, but I think it's worth taking a look at each of these points one by one, taking a look at your own document and seeing what kind of changes that you need to make. Going forward, today's Monday, November 21st, we basically have until Wednesday to request feedback if you want me to take a look specifically at something in your document. But what I would like for us to do here is when you are requesting feedback to reference one of the points that I've listed here in this document, and or any of the points that I mentioned here in this video. So, for example, if you have a question about a comma splice or a sentence fragment, you're not sure what it means or you're not sure how to fix it, those are the types of questions that you could, uh, that you could ask. Uh, instead of maybe requesting feedback to take a look at your entire document, I would prefer that you reference some of the points uh, or any of the points that I've listed here in this document. All right, so let me open up here an example of a text that I want to share with you. And I'm going to go through and touch on different points first as it relates to this one document. And then maybe touch on a few extra points from the, the list itself. Uh, if uh, anything was missed that I think are, are common in our, in our writing. So taking a look here first at your document. And again, I think the easiest way to do this is to have your document up and move back and forth between what I'm sharing with you here today with, with your own document. Make sure that you have a title for your essay. And I would stick to a title between 6 to 12 words. Make sure that the title is centered to the page in bold and the main words are capitalized. All right, so again, center to the page in bold, main words are capitalized. And make sure that you don't have any punctuation at the end. Okay, make sure you don't have a period at the end or a, a colon. Those are the two punctuation marks that I often see. So try to make sure that this is a level one heading according to APA. Again, center to the page in bold, main words are capitalized and no punctuation at the end of the title. So as we go through here, I think um, because this video here is going to be recorded, if you're watching this video, uh, this would be a good time to go back maybe and pause the video. I'm going to go through each point one by one. Um, so if you're watching this live, again, feel free to go back to the recording and, and pause it as you need to. I'm also going to try to field questions as, as I'm able to. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to post those, and I'll try to address those uh, periodically throughout the video. All right, so taking a look here first at the introduction paragraph. Remember that the introduction paragraph should have three parts. It should begin with a hook, followed by the context of the problem, and then to conclude the introduction paragraph, we need a good thesis statement. So starting with the hook, try to have a hook that is one sentence long, 
It can be an essential question. It might be a fact or statistic or an impactful piece of information that grabs the attention of the audience. Or it could be a famous quote. Now, if it's a famous quote, you can either include the person's name or anonymous. You can write out the word anonymous if the quote is anonymous. If it's a, an essential question, this is going to be an original idea, so you don't need a citation. You don't need a citation if it's a famous quote. But if it's a fact or statistic or some kind of impactful piece of information, uh, this is probably going to come from an outside source, so you will need a citation in that case for the hook. You'll need a citation and a reference according to APA. After the hook, you will need three to five sentences that describe the context of the problem. Now, the context of the problem, think of the question words in terms of what you can say about the problem. The problem gives your, your essay significance. It gives it purpose. It gives it a reason for writing an essay in the first place. So the introduction is a place where we can create this context to, pro to provide some maybe some background information that re that's very relevant to our thesis statement so think of the question words when you're asking yourself well what else can you say about the problem you can describe what the problem is you can describe how the problem came about in either historically or how it currently is a, a problem you might state why it's a problem with whom is it a problem is it affect more children versus adults for example where is it a problem? Maybe it has some uh, location, a specific location where this problem presents itself. Remember that in the introduction paragraph, we also need at least one citation to support the problem. So here again, the problem, the citation, will probably address one or two of those key question words. Again, thinking of what the problem is, how the problem came about, and so on. The last sentence of your introduction paragraph should be your thesis statement. This is going to be the key idea of your entire essay. We've talked in class about trying to include five different parts to your one sentence thesis statement. Should begin with an, a transition. All right, so try to mention or state explicitly in the transition something related to the problem. Try to mention the problem in the transition. Different ways of offering a transition might include a sentence connector, an introductory phrase like a participial phrase or a prepositional phrase, or maybe a subordinating clause. Maybe you begin your thesis statement with a subordinating clause. Now the only um, the only thing I would mention about if you choose a subordinating clause, for example, if you use a subordinating conjunction because, make sure that you, you don't repeat the subordinating conjunction if you're answering the question why later on in, as a connector. We'll talk about that here in a second. So, participial phrase, prepositional phrase, a sentence connector, maybe a subordinating clause is a good way to begin your thesis statement mentioning explicitly the problem. Think of the transition as a bridge between the problem itself that you've developed in your three to five sentences within your introduction paragraph and the thesis statement itself. The thesis statement essentially is an answer to the problem that you developed in the introduction paragraph. So after the transition, we'll begin with the topic. Now in this example, we have essentially one word for the topic. Now in your case, many of you might decide to make the topic more, more specific. Now how can we make a topic more specific or how can we make the subject of the sentence more specific? We can add adjectives, relative clauses. So maybe we say English language teachers, Maybe we say teachers who teach children in public schools. 
So by combining prepositional phrases, relative clauses, adjectives, we can expand the head noun. We can expand the subject to be to actually be more specific. Here in this case, then we begin or we continue on with the claim. May use different teaching techniques in order to improve pronunciation and skills. And this is our claim. Think of a claim as a position, a point of view, a perspective. Remember that a good claim has a has a uh, has two sides of of the argument. You can be for something or against something. Now, in this particular essay, we're only focusing on one side of the claim, but you should be able to consider the claim that you have and just ask yourself, could a case be made for the actual opposite of the claim that you're, you're, uh, post, you're uh, posing in your thesis statement? After we have presented the claim, then we need some kind of connector or a preposition. Now, if you're answering the question how, you're probably going to use the preposition by. If you're answering the question why, probably you're going to be using the subordinating conjunction because. And this is why I was mentioning earlier, probably it's best to avoid repeating the subordinating conjunction because in the transition, if you're going to also be using the same word because to list your three key points. Now, in this case, we're going to be using by answering the question how, and then we have three key points. Check your own three key points. Make sure that you have a comma to list out each of the three. So here's our first key point. Here's the second key point, and here's the third key point. You're essentially telling the reader what the three key points ideas are going to be in this order later on in your body paragraphs. So let's take a look at the first body paragraph and try to compare the first key point that you have listed in the thesis statement with the first topic sentence that begins your first body paragraph. So here, if we look at this example, we need to say something about karaoke. And in this example, I probably would add a little bit more information, although it's very much related to the first key point. It's very explicit, so this is good using even some of the keywords, in this case karaoke. We're using the words pronunciation, classroom communication, maybe we can be more specific if we're going to limit the discussion, if we're thinking about communication, if we're just talking about speaking, uh, if we're talking about a certain type of speech, if it's more presentational versus conversational. And a lot of times, once we've completed the body paragraph, it helps to go back to the topic sentence once again and just make sure that we're on topic and also that we're being specific enough that's appropriate for an idea that's being developed in just a single paragraph. Now, taking a look at your body paragraphs, I would recommend the second sentence of each to be the first case, first uh, evidence sentence that you present. So the second sentence of each body paragraph should in include a citation. Now, remember that each citation should have a reference. So I think one thing to do is to make sure that you check one by one each of your references and citations to make sure that each citation has a reference and each reference has a citation. And we can do that very quickly by just glancing down, going in and out of each body paragraph, going back and forth, to make sure that each citation has a reference and each reference has a citation. And that's what I'm doing here, just making sure that each 
Citation has a reference, and each reference has a citation. Now, I do notice here in this reference, Bethany, let's see if I can find it again here. So anytime that you have a reference with three or more authors, according to the 7th edition APA, we're going to need to use et al. in the citation. So again, if you look at this example here, Bethany, we have, it looks like one, two, three, four authors. So make sure that if you have a reference that includes three or more authors that we want to use at all. And you can go online and see examples, but essentially you're going to list the first author listed in the article, followed by at all period comma and then the year. Okay, going back to our body paragraphs, looks like the rest of these references are okay. Another thing to pay close attention to when you're looking at your body paragraphs is uh, not only that the second sentence should include a, an evidence sentence with a citation, but also pay close attention where you're placing the last citation, the last evidence sentence. To conclude each body paragraph, we need to have at least one analysis sentence and one linking sentence. Remember that the analysis sentence connects the evidence to the main idea of your paragraph or the topic sentence. That's the, the role of the analytic sentence, is to compare and contrast, to comment, to make the connection between the main idea of the body paragraph and the piece of evidence that you presented. So make sure that when you conclude a body paragraph that you have at least one analysis sentence and one linking sentence or summarizing sentence to conclude each body paragraph. What I would suggest doing in the first and second body paragraphs is to conclude each of those with a linking sentence. Now, what are you linking? The linking sentence can link the main idea of the current paragraph to the main idea of the following paragraph. This is why I suggest to avoid beginning each paragraph or any of the paragraphs with a transition. Because if we have a good linking sentence, there's no need to also include a transition to begin a, a body paragraph. The transitions are good within the body paragraph when you're connecting ideas from one sentence to the next. But again, if you have a good linking sentence, you're making that transition. There is some flow between, again, the main idea of one body paragraph and the main idea of the following paragraph. One thing also that I would suggest doing in the body paragraphs and the topic sentences to begin the body paragraph is to begin with the main clause. It's okay to have a complex sentence. In fact, I would suggest that you write complex sentences as, a, as opposed to compound sentences to begin the topic sentences. But begin with the main clause. Begin with the subject, making sure that we avoid any subject pronouns in the main clause of the to topic sentence. But begin with a, a noun, a subject that explicitly relates to the main idea or the main point of the, that body paragraph. Now, in this particular case, I would suggest expanding or providing a little bit more detail for each of the topic sentences. Again, these are more specific ideas, or they should be more specific ideas that are being presented in the thesis statement. These are more general ideas. The topic sentences are the same ideas, but more stated more specifically. One of the common uh, mistakes that I see when uh, writers are developing body paragraphs or trying to do too much within one, one body paragraph. Remember that a, a body paragraph is like a mini essay. It, it talks about a very specific point. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And of course, it relates back to the thesis statement, but again, it's taking one point and providing evidence 
or examples, details, facts, statistics that support that main idea. Think of citations as specific examples, details, facts, or statistics that support the topic sentence. You should be able to look at each citation and ask yourself, am, am I answering the question what, how, why, when, where, with whom? What question word or words is the evidence sentence, sentence supporting? And does it relate back to the topic sentence? All right, so double check each of your body paragraphs. Take a look at where you're positioning or where you're including your citations, making sure that your topic sentence is specific enough, making sure that each of your citations links to the references, that you have references to, uh, for each citation. When you begin your final paragraph, Right, the conclusion paragraph should begin by restating and rewording the thesis statement. Restate the thesis statement that you concluded your introduction paragraph. Begin your conclusion with the same statement, but reword it. Don't copy and paste it. Try to change the structure of the sentence. Maybe you're moving around different clauses. Maybe instead of a subordinating clause, you're using participial phrases. But think grammatically how you can modify that the structure of the sentence, but essentially say the same thing. Throughout your entire essay, try to avoid rhetorical questions. The only exception would be the, to hook the audience. Perhaps you could have an essential question to begin the, um, the essay, perhaps to conclude the conclusion paragraph, you could include maybe a deep thinking question. Um, a lot of times writers will include a quote to also conclude the uh, essay. That's also another option. You want a good closing statement to conclude the, the essay. Now between the restating the thesis statement and concluding your essay inside the conclusion paragraph, you want to focus on the significance or the importance or the relevance of your thesis statement. This is where you might use the present tense, I'm sorry, you might use the future tense uh, to maybe project future ideas or thoughts that are relevant to your thesis statement. But try to avoid the future tense throughout your essay specifically in paragraphs one through four, try to stay either in the present tense or the past tense. And again, you might have some cases where you're, uh, you're using the future tense in the conclusion paragraph. Also in the conclusion paragraph, make sure that you avoid any citations. You wanna have at least five citations throughout your five paragraph essay. You should have at least one citation in all of the paragraphs with the exception of the conclusion paragraph. So you'll have at least one citation in the introduction paragraph in each of the three body paragraphs. Because you're going to have at least five citations, you'll have, um, you may have one or two body paragraphs with more than one, maybe two, uh, maybe three, possibly uh, three citations within one paragraph. Now, make sure when you're going through and you're working towards your final draft that you, again, you're referencing point by point the do's and don'ts. I'm not going to go through each one of these points, but some, some of these, uh, especially the don'ts, things to avoid, make sure you try to avoid words like important, essential, good, better, best, beneficial, advantages, disadvantages. Try to avoid absolutes like all, everyone, never, Always, no. Try to avoid subjective, uh, subjective ideas or words or phrases that express some kind of uh, subjectivity. 
words like obviously, clearly, without a doubt. Try to avoid there is, there are. Anytime you have a there, are, there is or there are sentence, many times if you can reword that, you're going to have a more descriptive, more specific type of sentence. Try to avoid informal phrases like talking about, uh, as mentioned before, etc. Try to avoid idiomatic expressions like phrasal verbs. Try to avoid, for example, saying, instead of saying kids, we can say children. But phrasal verbs are also idiomatic. So anytime you have a phrasal verb, uh, usually it's best to avoid that and try to find the literal uh, meaning or a verb that's more literal. All right, uh, let's take a look at the formatting. And I'm going to take a look here. I'm going to first start by selecting the five paragraphs. We're going to divide up the formats in, in between two different sections. So the, the essay itself, the five paragraphs, and then we'll look at the references separately. So the first thing you'll want to do here is make sure that you have double-spaced your, your text. And also, make sure that you don't have any extra spacing between paragraphs. So here in this case, we want to reduce the space after the paragraph to zero. And also, we want to check off the box, don't add space between paragraphs. Now, I'm not using Microsoft Word. This is only Office. Uh, it says, don't add interval. And, it, and don't add interval between paragraphs. Um, but I think in Word, it says something like, don't add additional space between paragraphs. So we want to make sure that we don't have any extra spacing between paragraphs. That includes headings and paragraphs and paragraphs themselves. All right. Now, once we've done that, we notice right away that our spacing is okay now. All right. We don't have extra spacing between paragraphs, nor do we have extra spacing between the heading or the title of the essay and the first paragraph. Now I'm going to select the text once again. Make sure that you have your ruler. If you go to view, you should have an option to view the ruler. Make sure that the unit of measure is set to inches, not centimeters. Once you've done that and you've selected your text, then you can simply move the slider bars. In fact, you'll move the bottom slider bar Sorry, that's my mistake. We want the top slider bar over a half an inch, the bottom slider bar all the way to the left. And you'll notice now we have our indentation for each paragraph. Take a look at your own document and make those, make those changes. Also make sure, and there's no problem here with this example, but Again, select the text and make sure that all of the text is aligned to the left. Okay, sometimes we have this justified where the right side falls along the margin, but we want to make sure that it's left justified as it appears here in this example. Also, go to layout, margins, and make sure that you have a normal margin setting. The normal margins should be one inch top to bottom, left to right. One inch margins all the way around the text. You don't even have to select the text. Again, just go to layout margins and make sure that it's set to normal. All right, now the next thing we will check are the references. Now remember that the references, you're only going to have two headings for your five paragraph essay. You'll have the title of your essay and you'll have the heading references for your references. So a couple of things here. So what I would suggest that you do is to make sure that the 
that the heading is centered to the page. We want to make sure that it's in bold. We want to make sure that only the first letter is capitalized. Sometimes I see that the entire words are capitalized or all of the letters are capitalized. First letter is capitalized, the rest are in lowercase. And also make sure there's no punctuation at the end. Okay, so this is what your references level one heading according to APA should look like. Now I'm going to put the cursor just before the word references and I'm going to select on my keyboard control enter. I think you can also insert page break here if you go to insert page break. Now notice that my reference now is listed in the first line. Sometimes I, I did see some examples of essays where references was made where the, the heading references was on the second or third line. So again, just make sure that and what I always do is I just go back and just click or insert a page break, making sure that the level one heading is centered and then you should be good to go. Now the references, I do this a little bit differently. And the way that I would do this here is I first would select all of my references and select single spacing. I would make sure that there's no additional space after the paragraph. Even though these aren't technically paragraphs, it, they treat it as paragraphs anytime you hit the enter button, you start a new line, you're basically starting a new paragraph. So I'm going to make sure that there's no additional spacing and I'm also going to check this box, don't add additional spacing between paragraphs. Now you notice everything here now is single spaced and then what I'll do now is I will force a double space between each reference. In other words, we're going to single space within each reference, double space between each reference. So I'm going to force a double space between each of the references. Now the last thing I'll do here is add a French indentation. This is essentially the opposite of what we have in our essay. So the first line is going to be all the way aligned to the left, and then all subsequent lines within each reference will have a half-inch indentation. I use the slider bars. Um, make sure that all of your spacing, because sometimes we force these indentations by hitting the space bar, so just make sure you have just a single space between each of your words, and it should then automatically look like this once you've used your slider bars, as I've shown here. All right, so if you do it like this, I, I think personally it looks better like this. There's nothing wrong if you have double space throughout. Um, that's also acceptable. But personally, I just think it looks better visually looking at your references uh, if it's single spaced within each reference and double space between. Now, looking at the references, Always make sure that you avoid writing any words in English that are all an uppercase. It's all, all words should be upper and lower case. Okay, so example here, we would have English written like this instead of in all caps. We would have teaching forum like this. Okay, and we'll take a look here. In fact, let's just go ahead and look at this one. So we always want to make sure we capitalize proper nouns. Okay, so the word English will be always capitalized, even though only the first word of the article is capitalized. So double check each of your articles, making sure your references, when you list it, only the first word of the article, the title of the article is capitalized. Even if in the article, like it's likely that the main words are capitalized. But when we're listing it according to APA in our references, in our essay, we want to make sure that we're only capitalizing the first word. 
Now I'm going to do a search for this particular example because I think we need a little bit more information. I think we're missing some information after the journal. So let's take a, a look here. I'm going to go into Google Scholar. And see if we can find this article. Let's try again here. Okay, so I'm going to open up this article. And we're looking for a volume number. Now, this is here, English Teaching Forum. And there's nothing that stands out looking at the article itself. So let's, let's look at the main page. And here we have what we need. Here's the volume number 59 and the issue number 1. So in this case, we would have here, after English Teaching Forum, we would have 59, 1, comma. Now, remember that according to APA, we need to italicize the journal, the name of the journal, and the volume number. So it would look something like this. The issue number is normal. Make sure there's no space between the volume number and the issue number. We have a comma after the issue number, followed by the first page and the last page of the article, which does coincide with what it shows here. Everything else in this, in this um, reference looks okay. Now, I think what I would do is I would go ahead, <clears throat> go ahead and create a hyperlink just put the cursor at the end of the URL and click the space bar and uh, Word will automatically convert it to a hyper a hypertext. All right, so again, we have here this is a correct example. We've got the authors or author and then the year in parentheses followed by a period and then we have the title of the article. Only the first word is capitalized. If you have a subtitle, like you have a title and then a subtitle, sometimes you'll have a, uh, a colon followed by a subtitle. A subtitle follows the same rules as a regular title, only the first word is capitalized. Of course, we want to capitalize any proper nouns within the title or the, the, the name of the article. After the article, we have a period, and then we have the name of the journal, volume number, issue number, if there is one, and then the page numbers. This is a, an example of a DOI. It's a URL with a doi.org within the URL, followed by the rest of the, uh, the link. So again, double check your own references, making sure that you have each of these parts making sure that the formats, the punctuation, spacing is correct according to this example. Now what I usually suggest everyone to do is to find these examples online and just compare wh what you have with the examples that you find here. This is an example of the citation. This is the example of the reference. This is an example with a journal article with the DOI. Here you have examples of journal articles with no DOI. Okay, so double check each of these. In this case, this would be italicized, what I have highlighted here. This looks correct in terms of 
capitalization with the exception of the word helpful. So because we have a subtitle after a colon, we're going to need to capitalize the first word of that subtitle, in this case the word helpful. Now in the word, I'm sorry, in this document of do's and don'ts, I've included some links at the very bottom. Some of you have secondary sources, and I don't think it's a problem here, but when you have secondary sources, make sure that you include in your references where you cited the source. Okay, so here's an example where you're going to need to include as cited in. You use the phrase as cited in to refer to the article where you found the original citation. So here you will have two, like you'll likely have two authors listed. You'll have the original author's name and the year, and then the article that you are actually reading, you'll have also the author and the year as well making sure again you have the phrase as cited in in the, in the citation and in the references you're including only the reference that you're including in the phrase as cited in. So in this case Bertram would be in the reference as the example shows. So you would not include Fong. Now this is a paraphrase and uh, this is one way to include the insight in citation. I would suggest including all of both authors names at the very end as a parenthetical citation. So in this case you would have Fong 2003 comma as cited in Bertram comma 2009 all at the very end of the sentence in parentheses, that's how I would include the citation. And of course, you're only going to include the reference that you have as cited in. I've included here a link to et al, just in case you need that. I've included a link also to just articles that we have looked at as well. And... I think I've included at all, yeah, at all, and also the fonts. I'll include that also here in this document. These are the acceptable fonts. You have a little bit more choice in the seventh edition of the publication manual of APA. So feel free to choose any one of these fonts and just make sure you're consistent throughout your document. Sometimes when we copy and paste text from one document to the next, the fonts even the formats themselves, spacing, etc., will change. So always make sure anytime you're copying and pasting any text that you're always going back and making sure that the fonts are correct and overall formats are also correct. But here is a list, and I'll include that in our document. Oh, in fact, I, I think I already did. Yes, yes, I did. So here, I've included the link here to the acceptable fonts if you need to double-check your own Word document to make sure that you're using one of these that's listed here. All right, and so I think we'll stop there. All right, hopefully this helps looking at the example, especially in terms of formatting the steps that I followed to format the text, both in terms of the essay itself and the references at the bottom. Um, Just double checking here, and a lot of times it's it's helpful when you're double checking the fonts to select the entire text and just making sure, taking a look here at the uh, fonts, that they're all the same. If for any reason you used more than one font and you select the entire essay, you'll notice up here it will either be blanked out Either the, the name of the font will be blank, blanked out or the number will, will be blanked out. And that simply means that you have more than one uh, either font or font size. So the easy fix is just to go in and select the, the, all of the text and select either the font type or the size just to make sure again that you're being consistent.
make sure that we're paraphrasing all of our citations and we're using what's called parenthetical citations as opposed to narrative citations. And I think that's one more link that we need to share here. Parenthetical versus narrative citations. We want to try to stick with parenthetical. Parenthetical citations instead of narrative citations. Narrative citations is when you mention the, art, the author or you mention the study. All right, so my suggestion would be to not mention the authors, don't mention the study, right? So instead of saying, according to Alice, or this research suggests, stick to just the findings, stick to whatever they said, and use a parenthetical citation where it appears at the end of the sentence. So I'm going to go ahead and include that also here in our document. Parenthetical versus narrative citations. Again, try to opt for the parenthetical instead of the narrative. Here's an example of a parenthetical. And this is an example of a narrative citation. All right, I think I'll stop there. I hope this helps. Uh, please go through this uh, video. If you need to go back and check out the recording, pause it as you need to as you're checking one by one the different points that we've mentioned here in the video. Also, please double check in the... Also, double check in the... Um, this word, this document here, the, the document of do's and don'ts. Check each one of these and then ask questions as necessary. If there's something that I mentioned in this list that's not clear or that you need to see further examples, then you can mention me in your Word document and I'll go in and uh, take a look. Okay, we'll stop there, guys. Uh, make sure that you're reaching out to me and uh, try to complete uh, the draft. Our final draft will be due this Friday and you can re make requests for feedback up until uh, and through Wednesday of this week. All right, so we'll see everybody in class. We'll deal with any questions, of course, in our face-to-face uh, -face class on Wednesday as time permits. But again, feel free to reach out to me if you do have any questions. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, close this session, and we'll see everybody on Wednesday.